All right. Um, can you all see the screen? Uh, okay, so how to make a multiple choice or short answer test focusing on applied questions and being okay with it being open book and open notes. I've been doing tests like that since we were on Blackboard. I started teaching online back in 2006. Nobody in my department was teaching online and frankly, I didn't want to, but I was junior and nobody else was going to take it. And, you know, it grew on me. Uh, Canvas actually doesn't do this as well as Blackboard did. I'm going to warn you about that, but you can still do it. It's just a bit of a hassle. So I'm going to show you how. So first you create a quiz. Uh, when you're creating a quiz right now, Canvas gives you an option of doing this the old way or the new way. I don't remember the official terminology. When you click on create quiz, choose the old way. It actually will tell you that you should go with the old way for this. If you're going to, to design a, a test that's going to work with pools and uh, be more secure. So you select graded quiz put it in exams. I would also recommend selecting shuffle answers that provides even more variety uh, if you're worried about copying and all that. I tend to allow multiple attempts for this. I allow multiple attempts for this because each time they take an attempt, they're taking a different test. They're not going to be, no student is going to take the same test as another student and no attempt is going to be the same as somebody else's attempt. Though I also sometimes just create practice tests, which is basically the same test and let them take it multiple times. I treat it as a learning opportunity. So these are not super summative. They are somewhat summative, but they're mostly formative in the process. So taking them multiple times is actually good. And uh, generally, if you want, again, extra security and you are worried about things, you can go with one question at a time and then you can say you can go back. I don't do that because I'm not paranoid enough. But if you are more inclined to be stressing these things and do that. So then we're going to go to questions. So I've just created this. This is blank. There's nothing here. So you can do multiple things when you're making a test. You can do a new question. If you click new question, it's going to basically ask you to write a question. It means you're creating it, which certainly if you have lots of time on your hand and you want to do this kind of test, um, I admire you because I do not have a, a kind of time that would take to write six versions of every question I want to ask because that's basically what we're talking about. So I use publisher databases. So you can do several things. You can go with new question group and you can link to a question bank. Uh, this option will actually not, some, will not be something I recommend. Now you can rename question groups and you can say, I mean, just, I will just make up a name, but whatever topic your question on. So what they do generally is I group them by learning objective, essentially. And so whatever subject I want to be asking it's going to be this, and I'm going to say I want one question, one point per questions, but how many questions? Well, I can go and look at my question banks. And you see, I have many. All my test banks forever and ever are here. But I created for last semester special pool specifically for a particular chapter. It's not actually for this subject where I'm developing in my developing shell, but it doesn't matter. Right, so in that case, I pre-selected, created a separate test bank pool, specifically all the questions that were addressing everything in a chapter. And for this particular test, I was okay with them not being fully evenly distributed. So you can select that whole test bank and you can create a group. And so in this case, questions will be pulled from test bank. Now, if I'm going with a chapter pool, I am actually probably going to say, oh, if this is a quiz, well, I want 12 questions. And so I'm gonna go with that. So now I have a quiz and I've um, done it by selection like that. But we are going to do it differently. And that's what I recommend more. This, you will really go with the chapter pool if you are really short on time and it's not like super important test, basically. 
uh, and you want to basically sample from the whole large pool of questions. What I do is I tend to group them more. So for that, you go with fine questions. This is where I, where I was saying that Canvas doesn't do this as well as Blackboard. Because trust me, I have asked various experts and I've been on all the boards and there is just no way to get this to show you the whole question. Do you see how you see just part of it, right? Uh, so what I actually do is I open the same test bank in Word so I can see the whole question. So it takes time. It's kind of like an extra effort you put in. Or you can even sometimes guess like what they are. But the reason I open it elsewhere is I want to make sure I select on topic. I want to see if there is questions. Sorry. Right, so uh, if I scroll all the way down here, this tells me that I can be adding questions to a group and I'm gonna say this is a new group. So by expanding I, the, the box open wider and, and larger doesn't affect- uh, Does not, no, I'm just going to have empty space. This is what, what I've just actually done, but let me type this and I will show you what happens if you open the box wide and larger. It's, you know, I showed this to my husband, husband who is a software architect. And I'm like, look at how bad this is. And he's like, well, they should hire me. I'll fix it. Gee, thanks, honey. So I'm going to call this selection. And I'm going to say, I will want to say two questions. And I want each question to be one point. And I'm going to create this group. And now I'm going to go here. So what I do for this is I select applied questions. I do not select straight definition questions. I select questions which are like a story or it's asking you something about people, right? So like this. Now, mind you again right now because it doesn't show me things properly. Yes, I can make it bigger. It doesn't like to be made bigger, but I can. See, there you go. It helps nothing, none whatsoever, right? I can also just use my screen sort of enlarger, right? Make them bigger so I can read them easier, but it doesn't let me see more is what I'm saying, right? It just, so that's why if you're going to go with this route and you're creating it in Canvas, as opposed to where I mostly created all my old tests in Blackboard, you want to also open a Word file so you know which questions you want and you'll just recognize them by their beginning. Sometimes you can tell, but really generally, uh, it, does not, it does not do a very good job here. So let's say I've selected these questions which have names in them. I have no idea what they are, right? I'm just showing you. And this is from chapter one, right? So this is the test bank I've used. And I am going to say I want to add them to selection. And I will hit add questions. And now I can see the whole question, right? But you can see that I have this group it's called selection. And in this group that's called selection, I have all of my options and I now said we pick me two of these right so when student takes a test they are assigned two of these four and a different student will be assigned different two and if they take it another time so eventually you're going to have repeats if you say you want two out of four so usually I go one out of six or something like that and that gives me more security with the different questions So, um, yes, um, so that's my, you know, I do other things for exams, obviously also, and, or other than exams, I should say, but on campus for general psych, which is really the shell I'm working on, it's a survey course. So there is a lot of basic information they need to know, but I also always want them to understand. So on campus, I also tend to use these applied questions uh, on the test. So all you do when you're making test bank based exam is you basically work with the databases available and you pick things that are applied and you make it so students get different versions of the test. Uh, my particular test banks also have short answers, which you also can include if you want to. Um, be aware that if, you, if you're new to this and if you're going to include short answers, it is going to not grade them correctly, especially if there is punctuation, because it may insist that you put semicolon and not a comma, or it may not understand the spelling of the word or capitalization. 
And obviously anything that's like a small essay kind of answer, uh, you're going to have to grade manually. But you can, even with this, uh, you can have a variety. So again, different students will have different questions as long as you have enough questions. Well, are there any questions? There was some stuff happening in chat and I think Cara was... I am looking at chat. Yeah. I'm, did they say, this is not complicated. It's just, you know, you can certainly make it simple, but it's if you want to be really, really secure and you don't want to use secure software, right? And it yeah. um, would be nice if Blackboard fixed the scene of the questions problem, but I just do a split screen, basically. When I'm selecting them, I do a split screen of Canvas on one half and Word on the other half, so then I can see my questions and yeah. I can see them. So there you That's go. Great. That's my thing. Thank you.